Welcome. Recently I was working in Final Cut Pro on a project and I wanted to put a timer on my video, like overlay it. And I didn't like Final Cut's tools for doing that, so I thought this would be a good use for FFmpeg. So I've done a number of other videos on FFmpeg. I'll put a link in the description to those and I'll also put a link to the FFmpeg command I'm using here on my website um, so you can copy and paste it and play with it yourself. So I have this FFmpeg command. It's in FF Play right now. So if I paste that into my terminal, you can see I have this timer here. It has minutes on the left, seconds on the right, and it's just counting down by the seconds. So I can hit Q to exit this, and I'm gonna walk through this command here. So I've broken the FFmpeg command down uh, so we can go over it here. So we start with FFmpeg. So if you're messing around with this, what you can do is use FF Play to see what it's going to look like and experiment. And then when you have it all figured out in FF Play, you can switch over to FFmpeg. So the command here I just ran with FF Play and this FFmpeg one down below. The difference here is that it starts with FFmpeg instead of FF Play, and then at the end we have timer.mp4. So this bottom one is saving it to a file, this top one is uh, displaying it on the screen. So we start off with FFmpeg, then we use dash F lav phi, and this is like a video generator. And then dash I is our input. We want color to be black, and this is the background color. And then we have size is 240 by 96. And then SS is the start, and dash T is the time. So I wanted this to be 48 minutes. Then we have VF, which is the video filter, and we're using draw text. And here we want to choose a font file. So I'm on a Mac. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. So on a Mac, I typed mdfind. Dot TTF and that's for true type fonts. So that showed me some true type fonts here and I could choose any of those. I ultimately wanted a monospace font so I knew Monaco was one of those so I typed MD find Monaco and then I did pipe grep font. Let me fix that. It was font. <laughs> so here I found this uh, system library fonts Monaco defont. So I use this as my font and it worked. So you can download new fonts from the internet. You can use some that are on your system. You can Google to find out if you're using Linux or Windows. Um, if you don't know where the fonts are stored, you can Google that information and select the font. And you may want to copy that font out into the directory you're working it with too. Uh, if you want to make this more portable, you'd want to do that. So I chose the Monaco font. And the reason I chose a uh, monospace font is that I didn't want um, it jumping around. Let me run this again real quick. So when this goes to one, if you use a proportional font, this will jump around a lot. I just wanted it to be kind of a static look. And then we have text here, and I found this online, and this here prints out minutes and seconds, and you can do other codes in here to do the day, month, year, you name it. Um, these are standard Unix time codes. You see all these slashes in here? These represent escapes. There's lots of escapes here, um, so you can show the colon that's not used as a separator, things like that. And the PTS is the uh, time code. So then we had font color is white, and then the font size is 64, and then we have X and Y, and these are the coordinates. So Y is the width here, and then this is the width of the font. So it's taking the total width of the page minus the font divided by two, and it's doing the same for the height, and that is centering the text on the screen. And then we have box is one, and box color is green at .5. This is a green border at 50% transparency. And then we have the border width is 10. And then we're saying the format is YUV420P and it's saving as timer.mp4. So I'm going to pull this back up here in my terminal. And we have our little countdown timer. I'll hit Q to exit. So I'll change some of these things just so you can see what, that, what it does. So we'll change the border to five. So that gave us a smaller border. Now we'll change it to 15. Now we have a larger border. We can change that to yellow. We have a yellow border. Now you see that's transparent. If we take that, we can delete the transparency completely. And now we have full yellow. And that was with the transparency. 
So these colors can be hexadecimal values. So we can type 0x and then we can type, uh, let's see, C, 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 C. That'll be a gray. So they gave us a gray color. So these are just like when you're doing HTML colors. So let's see, we're back to that. Let me change the size here. So if I change this to say 640 by 480, you see it makes the screen a lot bigger, but we're still centering the text. And then we can change the time here. I have this set for 48 minutes. I'll change that just to run for two seconds. So when this is done running, it stays up on the screen. You have to hit Q to exit, but it just ran to two seconds. So you can play around with all these parameters here. Um, this centers it here, but you can say, you know, you can um, put parameters in to make it go so many pixels from the left or the right. Um, you want to look through the FFmpeg filter uh, documentation. Well, you want to search the page for certain things like, um, well, it's kind of hard to search for X, but you could search for like border W and find that part of the documentation, uh, font color, font file. Um, that'll get you in the right location to figure out where things are located in the configuration file. So when I created this, I didn't want the border on mine, so I'll just delete the border altogether. So now I have this command here, and I want to actually save the file. So I'm going to copy this, and then I want to type ffmpeg, and I'll paste this in. Next, I'll put my output file name, which is timer.mp4. I already have this, so I want to override it. And now this will create the file, and you can see the frame rate's super high. It's doing like 13,000 frames a second. And one reason is because this is a tiny file in uh, size. Should be done very soon here. Okay, so now here we have the file on the desktop. If I open it, you can see we have our timer. And if we look at it, we'll see the size of the file is 4.2 megabytes. So it's pretty tiny because, it, you know, it's a long video at 48 minutes, but there's not much in it. So. so that's all for this video. This is just a task I needed to do, and I thought I'd share it. Um, you know, this isn't meant to solve your problem exactly. It's just to kind of give you inspiration and idea how you can use these um, tools with FFmpeg, and you can suit them to your own needs. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.